celebrate the life of Pete Maratos. My name is Brent Delson, pastor of Grace Lutheran Church in Los Park. As we begin tonight, we begin with a reminder of Paul's words from his letter to the Romans about the claim of God upon our life in and through the sacrament of holy baptism. When we're baptized into Christ Jesus, we're buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. Here is the promise, for if we've been united with Christ in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn that casting their sorrow on you may know the consolation of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.
opportunity to hear some words on behalf of the family. We listen to some stories and some sharing of that. Until you got to know him and you realize that he was just a guy who loved to laugh, play jokes, make totes, goof around. It was all about his family, who was number one, and his reason for living. He taught us so much over the years. He showed us what it meant to work hard at a young age, that your family comes first, and to treat people with kindness. He would give the shirt off of his back to anyone who was in need, regardless of what he was going through. He was just always there no matter what. I remember at the restaurant, he caught a guy going through the dumpster. He was looking for food. My dad took him inside and gave him a meal. And from then on, every week, he fed that man. Didn't care. He even bought him a winter coat. He wasn't the only one, but God showed his compassion to He was a very generous man with a heart of gold. He helped so many people over the years that I've lost track. He touched so many people's lives and guided so many young adults with their careers, finances, and family lives from the restaurants. People that just worked for him, but he made them family. He didn't care if he was rich, he just wanted to be happy. He wanted his family to be happy, and giving made him happy. To see his kids and grandkids succeed gave him joy and made him so proud. At a very young age, I learned that he was one of the only people I could count on, and my trust in him was endless. Baba was one of my best friends on top of just being my Baba. I could count on him in the toughest of times, just to be there listen to me, or yell at me, or give me a good kick in the butt to strike me up. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for his persistence and his love to guide me and show me the way. I'm going to miss him so much. I will miss calling him every day just to chat. I will miss calling him for advice. I will miss hearing his voice. You know the one where he said, I have no accent. <laughs> <laughs> Our conversations had no boundaries. We could talk about anything. I will cherish the memories of our trips in Greece and all the other places we explored together. Life won't be the same without him. I love you, Baba. Rest in eternal peace and until we meet again, step up for Good evening. When I was in high school, my parents would have people over on the 4th of July. I was lucky enough to be able to invite some friends. They would come over for food and hang out throughout the day for fireworks. My dad loved the legal fireworks. <laughs> if you know my dad, you know he was always sweeping something. Whether it was the garage, the kitchen, at work, he always had a broom in his hand, just like his mother. Well, this day he was sweeping, and I decided to screw around with him. I don't remember if I was kicking the broom or throwing stuff on the ground in front of him, but I was bugging him. So he took a little swing at the broom with me, and he missed. We laughed, my friends giggled, then he swung and missed again. <laughs> my friends laughed, I laughed a little more, but he laughed a little less. <laughs> Soon, he was slowly chasing me through the house with his broom while I, laughed, while I was laughing running around. At some point, I, I turned and realized he wasn't laughing anymore, <laughs> and that I was in danger. <laughs> we carried on out through the front door, back in through the garage, and, and made a few laps through the house while I was running for my life. At this point, the only people laughing were my friends, although a few were, seemed scared for me. 
I could have outrun for hours, but I realized this map would not be stopped, and that there was no place I could hide. The look in his eyes told me I had screwed up, and there was no way he was losing this battle. I finally slowed down and turned to pleading with him. He gave me a few solid whacks, and we laughed as we both caught our breath. That was who he was. A man with such great determination in whatever he decided to do that he seemed invincible. He would take each task and, ob and obstacle of life with such fearlessness and dedication that anything seemed possible. From helping remodel bathrooms, basements, fixing cars, lawnmowers, opening new businesses and new places, and putting everything on the line, everything he had on the line to accomplish his dreams. He had this undenying belief that nothing was impossible. His children all knew this. And he knew that, and we knew that he was a phone call away, like Tina said, to help with any problem or worry we could ever have. To him, family and taking care of them was the only thing in his life. Words can't describe the force of nature he was. I challenge you all here to take a little bit of my father with you today, and know that anything you want to accomplish can be done. Know that hard work can move mountains, and to be fearless in life and in your endeavors. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Hello, not sure I'm going to follow that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm Matthew, I'm one of Pete's grandsons. Um, I want to start off by saying I wasn't sure if I would make it up here today, but on behalf of my family and all of my cousins, So, given that, 
He was, uh, he was an amazing grandfather. He taught us a lot. No matter how hard he was on all of us, we all know that everything he did taught us something, and we took something from it. And through all the ups and downs of my personal life, he taught me to have a good work ethic. So, given that, I love you, Papu. Thank you for being in my life, and everyone just thank you for coming and being there for my family. were a millionaire, and you probably were, but you helped. You're always helping somebody, your family, your friends, and those people you hardly knew, like Tina said about the homeless guy, helping him. Tina said most of it. <laughs> he, he couldn't be a millionaire because he had a heart of gold. He looked behind, beautiful wife. Five beautiful children. He was so proud of you guys. He left his legacy behind with his grandchildren and his great grandchildren. He was always full of love. God said it was time for him to go. His time on earth is is done. And God said that he needed an angel. He will forever be in our hearts. We will never forget him. My brother, I'll see you in heaven. See, when a person's born, they're given a soul. And that soul never grows old. It lives on into eternity. So when people get sick and pain comes in their life, it's just the body. It's not the soul. And character does not dictate what a soul is. A soul shapes the characters. And Pete had a beautiful soul because of his character. There's so many things he did. I've been in you know, over 35 years that I've known him. I never once had to worry if my sister was going to take care of him. I never once had to worry whether his kids would be taken care of He never once had a mean word with me. Not once. Mm -hmm. he, he was made of a heart of gold. And there's so many stories that can go on and on. The things that he did. I saw him work so hard in his restaurants, the big thing. To, to make things for his family. And the most profound thing that he gave to me was in the last couple of months. At the beginning of November, when he was told 
by the doctors, there's nothing more we can do. And from the, that time to the time his soul is released into eternity, we have approximately 1,600,000 breaths. And that got me thinking. We try and measure our lives in years and days and months. Do you ever think about how many breaths you have left? Each breath, Pete tried to do something good with his life. Each breath that he could have. And as, as he got to the end of his life, when he's down to ten breaths, eight breaths, nine breaths, five breaths, the final breath, his soul is still alive as it was when it was the day he was created. And I believe that he could hear the love from his family, the love from his friends, because his soul lives on in eternity. His body couldn't respond, but his heart was rejoicing. And when he got down to that final breath, he knew God was calling him home. And he let go of his body and walked into eternity. Think about your own life. How many breaths do you have left? In the time I've been talking, you wasted about 120. <laughs> And we don't think about that until we lose our breath. And then we can't. But we don't think about the breaths. So it's each breath that you take. Follow Pete's example. Do good for other people. Love your family. Do as much as you can in this world. Because it does go quickly. And that breath clock never stops. And you'll come down to your life sometime. Ten breaths left. Eight breaths left. Five, four. And you step in the eternity. Thank you. Love you, Pete. Let's say thanks to all the family members who took the courageous moment to uh, reflect and share, which is just a vital part of why we gather together. To be able to collect those thoughts and to be able to share them as we honor and give thanks for life. The family selected three scriptures. Let me briefly read those. The first comes from Romans 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or persecution or, pers or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, Paul writes, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ our Lord. And a scripture from John 14 that I shared, the last scripture I shared with Pete. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, Jesus said, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Now Thomas, one of his disciples, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus spoke those familiar words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And finally from Luke 10, these words. A lawyer stood up to question Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, in typical fashion, took a question and turned it around with another question. And he said to him, what do you see written in the law? What do you read there? And the lawyer replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, with your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You've given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. He writes the readings. Thanks be to God. Jean and family, friends gathered together. We're gathered together in a sacred moment. And we honor a life well lived. And in so doing, we honor the one. We honor the God who gave Pete life. Pete walked in the footsteps of those who went before him. So too as his family. 
you now follow in his footsteps. The Koine Greek word for follow is akulithane. It means we walk or we follow. As we walk here, we follow in the footsteps of our ancestors who've gone before us. And even more importantly, as Christians, as we follow the way of the Lord. This evening, we importantly take time to celebrate Pete's life. This marks an ending in some ways, but when the sun rises again tomorrow, Pete would expect that you would step into a new beginning. T.S. Eliot wrote, what we call the beginning is often the end. And so to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. Or as the poet Brendan North writes, beginnings are often found at ends when time itself begins to bend back on its lessons as life transcends with new stories to tell as it begins again. You heard a few stories as we've gathered here tonight. Some of them funny, and some of them reflecting deep heartfelt love shared together with a dad, with a grandpa, with a husband. Pete loved life because Pete loved people, especially you as family. At the end here, let's be honest, he loved having all of you gathered around him. He really didn't want to go. The fact is, he didn't want to miss out. I call that FOMO. <laughs> he excelled in the food business because it's all about serving, and it's about making people happy. We all feed our faces at least three times a day. What Pete valued were people gathered around the table eating good food, enjoying time together. Some of us Americans have lost that value of community around the table. I've seen it in Greece, I've seen it in Italy, I've seen it in Israel. Perhaps it's just a Mediterranean thing, but we should all gravitate in that direction because it's a healthy way to live. With family, with friends gathered around a table, gathered together with community. Good food, good friends, maybe good booze, <laughs> and certainly good time together. Thanks, Pete, for holding on to the value of people gathered around the table. People gathered around the table was valuable to Jesus as well. On the night before the end for Christ, he took bread and wine, and he said, remember me as you eat and drink. We gathered as Pete's family in the house near his end, and we remembered the Lord together with Pete, who got the hiccups afterwards. <laughs> it was a holy time together. Pete's Greek name means all holy, referring to the Virgin Mary, to Theotokos, the God-bearer, the one who brought the Lord into the world that he loves so much. Christ came to extend an invitation to all people to know God's love, to teach them kindness and compassion. This was example, exemplified many times in Pete's life, especially to the poor, to the marginalized, to the forgotten and the sick, to people facing challenges. Jesus summarized those Ten Commandments into two, as you heard in the last reading, to love God, to love people. That is really basic really simple, but somehow we ended up in the ditch in our culture, divided, and we just see so much critical nature amongst people. Pete modeled that kind of care for people, right? And so it's those two values that I think fight against the self-centeredness we see in our world today. Perhaps instead of thinking, I deserve, we need to imagine, as Pete did, I'm here to serve, instead of always about me. Because the food industry is about serving first. Because if you want to stay in business, you got to serve. you got to be about people, but you also need to serve a good product, which Pete understood out of his heart for people. 
Well, it may be true that Pete wasn't too religious. We prayed several times, numerous times over the last few years. And we remembered Jesus numerous times as we ate and drank at the Lord's table in Pete's house. He still had the flame of faith. Again, always the end precedes the beginning. What do I mean by that? As surely as there can't be spring without the end of winter, Jesus makes it clear that to find hope, to discover new life, means that we have to let go and let God. So that God can do in us what God wants to do in us as we trust the Lord. Somehow as we fool ourselves into thinking that we've got this, that we're in control, it's not until sometimes when we become sick that we wake up and recognize it. Perhaps I don't have this. Perhaps I need my family around me. Perhaps there is something more in store. God doesn't play second chair in anyone's band. Christ is not your backup singer. He can't be the leader unless we allow the one who wants to lead our life to do that work. When a lawyer finally came up to ask Jesus, about what it took to have eternal life. He told the story, he went on to tell the story of a Jewish man who was walking on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell into the hand of robbers, was left half dead. By the side of the road, the religious folk walked by, but it was his enemy who stopped and cared for him. He paid him for his bills, he fed him food, he showed him love. I think that is the very spirit that Pete tried to demonstrate in his life knowing that none of us are perfect, right? Sometimes we throw stones at our siblings. <laughs> or a hot charcoal. You know? It's part of growing up. Well, that final scripture I shared with Pete on that night was from the table of the Lord the night before his death. It was when Jesus said, I've got to prepare a place for you. And it's that place that we celebrate tonight. Jesus sensed anxiety in the room and Christ comes to give us peace. And so I remind us of the sign that sits outside the Japanese garden in Rockford at Christmas time, which simply says, believe. Yeah. Believe. So I want to close with a quote from the author of the Lord of the Rings, Tolkien. I think what he has to say is good. Still round the corner there may wait a new road or secret gate. And though I oft have passed them by, a day will come at last when I shall take the hidden paths that run west of the moon, east of the sun. The place, indeed, that God has prepared for us. So thanks be to God for the life and memory of Pete Marantos. Amen.
God, your love never fails, and you can turn the shadow of death into daybreak. Help us to receive your word with believing hearts, so that confident in your promises, we may have hope and be lifted out of sorrow into the joy and peace of your presence. In the midst of our grief, O oh God, we pray for those that we too often forget, all who are homeless or battling addiction the sick or isolated, those who have no one to care for them. May you use us to bring help and healing to those who are broken in body or spirit, to give a listening ear to those who need comfort in their sorrow or need company in their loneliness, a warm meal or a place of safety and warmth. Grant to us, O oh God, as we continue to walk through this life that we may indeed walk by faith, that your Holy Spirit will lead us. Finally, as St. Francis once prayed, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console others, to be understood as to understand others, to be loved as to give love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And now, O oh God, we join in praying together as you taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, on behalf of the family, and I don't know, maybe you're all family. <laughs> I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for your love and support for Pete's immediate family. I invite you to continue to keep them in your thoughts and prayers in the days and weeks ahead. Um, to you, Jean, and to you kids, and to grandkids and great-grandkids, may the peace of Christ be with you as you journey forward, as you follow in the way that your dad has led the way. So following the commendation and the closing song, uh, the funeral home uh, staff will be having you pass by the casket on your way out, and the family will remain for some private time here at the end of this service tonight. So let us commend Pete Maratos to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Pete, Acknowledge we humbly beseech you as sheep of your own fold, 
a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the mercy, into your mercy, and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. In the name of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.